thank you uh, for inviting me to give a talk here. So I'm going to talk a bit about um, some of our research and latest thinking on adolescent brain development. So what happens in the adolescent brain? Well, until about 15 years ago, we really had no idea how the human adolescent brain develops. But since uh, the, since being able to use um, MRI scanning to look at changes in the developing brain, we've learned a great deal about how the adolescent brain changes both in structure, so we can measure things like grey matter and white matter, um, and also how it changes in function. And I'll just tell you a little bit about that. So what does grey matter do in the prefrontal cortex? This is a graph showing uh, the volume of grey matter here on the vertical axis, plotted against age in years from 4 to 22. And you can see that in both boys in blue and girls in red, grey matter volume increases during childhood. It peaks, this is what the arrows point to, it peaks uh, a little bit earlier in girls than in boys, and that probably corresponds to the slight difference in average age of puberty onset between the sexes. A little, puberty happens a little bit later in boys than in girls. And then during adolescence and into the 20s, there's a significant decline in grey matter. One thing to say at this point is that we don't know what that decline in grey matter volume corresponds to at a cellular level because MRI doesn't give us the resolution to see the brain at a cellular or synaptic level. But we suspect that it corresponds at least in part to a really important neurodevelopmental process where synapses, that is connections between brain cells, um, are pruned away according to whether they're used or not used in a particular environment. In other words, we suspect that at least in part, this decline in grey matter volume during adolescence um, reflects the fine-tuning of brain tissue according to the environment that the adolescent is in. So what really, we're really interested in is how does the social brain develop in, in adolescence? And we, we and other labs around the world have done quite a lot of work on that now. And just I won't tell you in any detail about it, but just to summarize one of the findings that seems to be quite a robust, reliable finding because it's occurred, it's cropped up in all the studies that have focused on uh, social brain activity in adolescence compared with adults, and that is this. So this is a meta-analysis of nine different studies, a couple from my lab, and others from uh, other labs around the world, comparing uh, social brain activity during some kind of social uh, task between adolescents and adults. And what they all find is that this region of medial prefrontal cortex is differently activated in adolescents than adults. It tends to be more highly activated in, adult, in adolescents than in adults. So its activity decreases with age as you go from early adolescence to adulthood. Now, we don't know why um, adolescents use this region of the brain more than adults do, but we think it might be because they use a different cognitive strategy to do these kinds of social tasks. So that's my final slide, just to summarise now and to think a bit about what the implications are for education. Well, firstly, the, brain, the adolescent brain is still developing. I've just given you a kind of snapshot of how, but there is now a vast... Uh, literature on how the adolescent brain is, is developing in many different areas. Um, it's highly malleable and flexible. This is a really important time of opportunity for learning and creativity. Um, we know that synapses, connections, are being pruned away during adolescent, the adolescent years, uh, and that suggests that uh, adolescent brain development is, can be, is influenced by the environment. And of course, the environment can mean lots of things from culture to social environment to um, uh, potentially damaging um, stimuli like alcohol or drugs. And also, of course, education is an environmental influence. And it's possible that people are starting to talk, talk about adolescence as representing a second period, sensitive period of brain development. Finally, risk taking and social influence uh, are often kind of mal maligned as like bad adolescent behaviours, but actually our take on, the, on these behaviours is that they are adaptive and important. It's important to take risks. Where would we be if we never took risks? Adolescence is a period of life where you need to become independent from your families and go out and affiliate with your peers and also explore your environment. So these are probably really adaptive behaviours that are there for a very good reason and are essential for... <laughs> In becoming adults. So we need to harness the adolescent propensity, natural propensity to take risks and foster it in, uh, in settings like the classroom.